so by keeping things in the front a little bit darker and sharper we'll bring them closer and then everything else that's cooler and softer just gets pushed So this is quite a different one altogether. You can see compared to the other ones. Hey, I'm Leila. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be dedicated to a very special people. People whose help helped me to make videos for all of you here on YouTube. These people are my supporters on Patreon. For this video, what I have done so far is I have contacted five of my earliest patrons. So patrons who have been there from the beginning and stayed with me till this day. And I've asked them to send me photos through because what I want to do is I want to paint little paintings for them to say thank you and send those paintings back to them. So in this tutorial, I will be able to show you how you can choose a specific spot that would make for an interesting work from photographs that you have or the footage that you have. I will also show you some tips and tricks on using watercolor and sketching things. And you will also be able to see the finished result for each one of these little paintings. So I hope you guys get to enjoy and relax and let's go my patrons have sent me photographs some of them some of them decided that i should choose the subject so what i want to show you guys is that you can pretty much turn any photograph into an artwork what you need to do is you just need to find more of a focal point in it so for example let's have a look at this um, photograph this photograph uh, shows a very beautiful beautiful rich sunset or more of a night time you know like sunsets pretty much over um, there's a lot of darkness but I wanted to focus a little bit more on the brighter colors within the composition so what I've decided is I've decided to sort of zoom in a little bit um, and use that specific part of the composition for this particular one i would like to have a really nice sharp edge so i'm going to use this um, masking tape to create a really nice clean edge now that i've got the tape around um, the edges i am going to sketch the composition itself so we, whenever we start sketching the composition we always start with the most important object the most important object is usually the largest one the one that determines the whole composition so we've got our line of horizon then we start to mark parts so this is where that bridge is so somewhere from here let's say to here silhouettes are so there are some trees i can see and of course the reflection would have a very similar thing going on now here is the bridge on the top there and we get the I think that this side sort of is on the angle here. And then of course according to the one point perspective we can put in these buildings through as well. obviously there and then a few other things as well now what I'm going to do next for this particular artwork 
is I'm going to use the masking fluid or blocking medium it's pretty much the same product just a different name and now again when you're using this guys make sure that you use a brush that's not extremely expensive I'm going to mark some of the really bright lights and some in the water but I'm only going to block out the brightest ones I'm not going to put you know to block everything in and another thing I'm going to block in is the moon and also the reflection of the moon in the water because these are the brightest if I had to choose just one thing to block that would be moon and the reflection next I am going to apply moisture to this paper I'm not going to add too much but I do need to dampen this and the bottom as well because I will be working at the same time on the top and the bottom okay so now I am going to start with the lighter color in the middle here so we've got if we look at the composition we've got a bit of orange going on so I'm going to take some warm yellow and I am going to take a little bit of this red as well one more thing you need to remember about watercolor is that it usually goes more pale when it dries so if you want to create this really intense color you need to make sure it's more intense than what it looks like when it's a little bit wet so now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this red and just lay it through and just let it sort of dissipate as much as it wants to a little bit more pink a little bit more in the sky it won't be as visible as the darker colors are I'll add just a tiny little bit of the brighter pink just to brighten this whole thing up and the yellow light as well so that's quite a bright it's not necessarily lemony but it is a cooler yellow and just to add a little bit here to Prussian blue and I'm going to use it with quite a bit of water because the paper is already drying up the one thing you have to be careful about when using things like that is not to overlap uh, yellow and blue too much I'm also going to add just a tiny little bit of quinacridone purple and you see how we're starting to get those clouds naturally with just water sort of coming through coming down that's how watercolor is so cool you get these really cool effects with it and now I'm going to just on the edges there just to darken it a bit more sort of to make it a bit more into a night sky so neutral tint for those of you that don't know it's like black but it's just a little bit more transparent so it still lets other colors through quite a bit so it's perfect for those situations when you need to darken something but you don't want to turn it black so that way it almost creates like a shadow a shadow effect almost and do the same thing on the bottom here as well okay so now I'm going to go for a smaller brush, smaller round brush and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this yellow and red with pink just a little bit, introduce some more of those waves with a bit more water and hopefully it will give us a bit more of that reflection you know of this in the air and then of this in the air as well the reason why I'm using a small brush is because I don't want to bring in too much water because I don't want to make this effect very very strong 
a little bit is okay see just you happening that's fine okay so now I'm going to go over some of that area in the middle there because see remember how I told you that when watercolor dries up it becomes a little bit more dull so you can see this is much more dry than this for example so I want to make some of the colors a bit stronger through there and what I'm going to do now while all of this is drying I'm going to go over some of the windows in the buildings and sort of do that light hazy glow in there now remember some of the really bright ones are blocked in so I'm going for the ones that are medium darkness touch dry so I'm going to add black and this time I'm going for the Mars black which is you know, as dark as you get it some people say that lamp black is the darkest but practice for me sort of shows a bit that Mars black is the darkest it's a bit warmer but it's now this is still a little bit damp so it's not going to give me exactly sharp edges and that's exactly what I want because there is a little bit of that haziness that's happening okay so there's like a little tree there more trees and things sticking out some things are quite clearly visible and some are not so There's also like a, almost like a shadow of the darker on the bottom. And if you look very closely at the photograph, it's quite interesting because there's almost like a red halo around some of the objects. So I'm going to do a similar thing with more water. And just to add here and there, it's probably just a rays of the setting sun that are catching on things but it creates a really warm sort of a look okay now I can also see some darker clouds as well in the sky almost like in the shape of a line a couple more here and there and remember when you are working on the photograph it doesn't mean that you need to turn every photograph into its exact copy you know, there's a difference between photorealism or being a human printer and looking at things creatively. So that's why you, you know, you can take your creative license and just alter certain things, add, make some shadows darker, make some highlights brighter and so on. But it is good to have a reference because if you're only working from your memory and you've never worked on scenes like that, then you're going to run into other kind of problems so there's always that happy sort of a medium I'm going to leave some of these windows that are glowing and of course on the areas where it's extra dark make sure that you create those shadows okay so all I have left now to do is to wait for this to dry and then remove the um, masking fluid and after that we'll see if we need to do any more touch-ups so removing masking fluid reveals our strongest highlights maybe still some left there so you can just go over and feel it with your fingers and you'll be able to feel if it's all off now to make our final touches i'm actually going to remove the tape because that way we'll be able to see colors much clearer so let's have a look yes yeah, so you can see now with the white border you can see uh, that the colors standing out much more I'm going to brighten some of the colors as well and just add a little bit more color just feels like it needs a bit more color again remember when it dries it's going to be a little bit duller again another thing that we can do is we can get some of gouache 
little bit of yellow into that and there is a little bit more of the you know the scares of lights gouache is not going to be as strong as when we left some paper but it can be good for those additional little things so all I need to do now is just leave it to dry and it's good to go next on the list is John's um, photograph that I'm going to turn into a little painting so you can see that I've done the uh, masking tape thing again this one you can also see how uh, it was quite a large beautiful photograph but I've decided to zoom in to this one particular part I just found the most interesting you know with the trees sort of overlapping on the side and going completely over you see how here I'm actually starting to work on the side with trees and things for these trees I'm just going to add a little sort of a parts in it and then just branches and then everything else can be added in later on the mountain So that, that'll do for the sketch. Add some water. Water in the sky and water in the water. I think this is sufficient enough. I'll leave the mountains out. So I'm going to mix up some of those neutral grays and blues. Blue in there as well creating clouds so you can see how quick it is when you've got your paper damp enough and now I'm going to apply very similar colors to the water water is much smoother on the other hand except for a couple of darker spots which are obviously reflections of the mountains or something by the mountains um, start working on some of the foliage because it's so separate from everywhere else um, I will wait for this to just dry a little bit oh, this is actually dry enough maybe I'll do the mountains now so some neutral tint some Russian blue And I'm pretty much just blocking this in. I'm not going to get into any detail on this because it's so far away. I just love this brush so much. So now this is the sort of like a backdrop almost to our composition, you know, the mountains and everything. And now I'm gonna go for some Prussian green to mix into the mix and that mountain there obviously has some trees or something so I'm gonna create a little bit of that texture I'm not going to define anything at all because it's quite far away and then create underwashes for the darker colors as well So this green here is a mixture of um, green gold and Prussian green. This brush is perfect for branches and things like that because it's so long, the hairs are so long, it's actually quite hard to get a lot of control so you get these really natural lines. So as I said again, this is a really good brush for those things. What I will do is I'll try and find links for these things for you guys. So if you want to have a look at how much they are and so on. Ok, 
okay so now I'm going to add a little bit more foliage up here so all that darker stuff Prussian blue and some and that brown I'm getting some of that neutral tint and just adding it right in there so by keeping things in the front a little bit darker and sharper we'll bring them closer and then everything else that's cooler and softer just gets pushed back In some areas I can see a little bit of a tree stump. So. I don't know whether this one's catching more light, but it seems a bit warmer than these ones. So I'll, I will add a bit more of the cool color, but I'm starting up with a light and warmer shade because of that. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the other tree. The tree is quite dark and quite irregular. Okay, now I'm gonna go back into these ones because they are a little bit more dry. Okay, so now this little painting is done. We can remove the masking tape as well. And it should be done. Okay, so this is um, John's little painting. So now I'm going to go into um, David's one. And for this one, I am going to. Uh, David actually sent me a few different photos, and I have chosen this one just because I love how soft and mellow the colors are, and so on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sketch this out with a pencil quickly and then I'm going to go over it. I'm also going to make pencil a little bit more prominent especially on the foreground and that way it'll be showing through underneath from underneath the uh, paint as well. There's a little house there. This beautiful um, I don't know if they're hills or maybe just a rows of trees and things. So I'm going to make this one almost, you know, almost decorative in the way that all these rows happen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start working with that really, really sort of a layer at the back and then the one right at the front. So I'm just applying water over, sort of like a, a little bit of a dirty color, but I'm going to use it so lightly. It's just going to create that haze and a little bit of yellow now and there. So while that is drying, I am going to work on the front here. And on the front, I can see some lovely bright greens. And you see now I did not wet the bottom part. I'm just working on a dry because I will be um, introducing other colors I go along. So I don't want to over over wet it, you know, overdo it. So I'm just applying some dabs of darker green and then just letting it run. So now I'm going to leave that to dry. And this has it's not completely dry, but it's you know, I can probably work on the layer next to it. So next I'm going to mix a little bit of the darker hazy color, so a little bit of purple and goldens, just 
that sort of a, it's quite an amazing light that photograph okay so this one is just a little bit hazy green just making it a little bit darker than the sky I'm also adding a bit of yellow through here because of that you know those rays of light coming through and now I am going to work on this sort of a section here, which is in the middle. Yeah, just go over it really softly. And I'm going to create some shadows as well. Shadows are a little bit cooler in color on this photograph. First I'm going to add them into wet so that they dissipate quite well and then I'm going to go over it when it's a little bit drier. Okay, so I think I can go with another layer here with my next line. And this one now is going to have a little bit more green to it. Okay, so just gonna go over the shadows again. There's another house there actually. Okay, so now I'm going to go over another layer up here on the top. And this time it's gonna be a bit more green because every time things get closer to us they become a little bit warmer. But I'm not going to use warm warm green. I'm gonna leave that here. Okay, so now I'm definitely going to need to leave this to dry and in the meantime I will work on the front Just getting a bit of vocal Conocred and gold and conocred and burnt orange together Just at the root of that grass there. And now using some of the really dark colors to really bring out these little poles. I guess there is probably like a net that's going through. I can't really see it that well, so I'm just just gonna put that in. So yeah, so you can see how this is a very different um, thing altogether. Let's take this off and see if we need to add anything else or if it's done. Oh yes, there is one thing that I did forget and it's those um, power lines or poles, wherever they are Okay, I can add them in Okay, so I think this is done
So this is quite a different one altogether. You can see compared to the other ones. Now this next one is going to be uh, from the image that was sent to me by Justin. So with this one again, it's this one's quite straightforward because I'm just going to do a line. Which represents the line of horizon and then I've got um, a few mountains. But what I'm going to do with this one what's going to make it different is that I am going to hold it in a somewhat, a somewhat vertical way. So um, first I'm going to just wash my brush and um, add some water. Okay, so now I'm going to use some ultramarine blue, so some warm blue and a little bit of neutral tint to create that sort of a color that's similar to what I've got there. It's not very strong so what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to so this is a wet on wet technique and now I'm also going to add just a tiny bit of um, the Van Dyke brown into that mix to sort of neutralize the blue and some of these clouds are going to be just a little bit more warmer so you see you get this um, change in, in shade a little bit more blue and a little bit more neutral kind of a warmish gray. And that's the beauty of watercolor, you know, that it can run so smoothly into each other and create these really beautiful expressions on paper. So it's got a really heavy sort of a sky and that's why I've used these colors. Um, and now I'm going to go onto the mountains. Now these mountains are quite a neutral sort of a gray shade so for that I'm going to use some ultramarine blue and some blended brown again. So rather than using black sometimes it's quite good to create a sort of a mix. Um, okay so I'm going to see while this is wet I'm going to add water and carry on with the sky because that third mountain there sort of a softly blends in and on this area here this is what I'm using you know while this is still wet I'm just trying to create that sort of a look and I can see that on the top here it's just a little bit more blue so I'm going to add that while the paint is still wet and smudge it not smudge it but just blur it and it'll blur itself and really don't really need to do much. And here I'm using a mixture of Prussian green and Van Dyke brown. Just a little bit on that side there. A bit of ultramarine blue on top of that just to create a richer sort of a shade. Now that mountain there in the distance, I think it's the mountain that's furthest away from us and that's why it appears a little bit more washed out, a little bit lighter. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, while this is still a little bit damp, because these clouds they kind of uh, merge into these mountains. Same here, you get a bit of that blurred thing going on. I'm going to do a really light wash. Now this is the lightest color on this plane is everything else it's a bit darker. Now while it's wet I'm going to add a little bit more of those darker colors so a bit more of the burnt umber and Van Dyke brown together 
and just few of those planes and then just let it run and you see this is what I'm doing with this particular work I'm just adding some of the colors that I can kind of pick up a little bit on the photograph but I'm exaggerating them a little bit so I'm adding a bit of this burnt orange in here and now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the relief of the like that outline it sort of looks like it's got lots of um, trees or something like that and I'm now just filling it all in I love the combination of these colors I think there's like a dark forest in the front as well but I'll just leave that this um, ultramarine blue color is a granulating color so you can create really interesting color separations and I'm just reabsorbing this a little bit just to create that same look that is happening on the photograph you know where the clouds or fog whatever it is obviously taking over A little bit more of the blue, just a tiny little bit, and I'm gonna smudge that out. Just the end. The reason why I've added it in just to create a bit more contrast with the yellow in the foreground. Now, while all those mountains are drying, I'm going to work a little bit more on the front here. So, I'm gonna add some green. and a little bit of that Van Dyke brown and that moistness from the green color really sort of takes care of distributing it where it needs to go start getting a little bit more into the detail here because this is all grass so creating texture that would be reminiscent of the grass that would make us think that there is something there now let's see yeah i think the mountains are ready for me to go back into them and let's see i'm just going to get a darker color that was also has a bit of this um, prussian green so get some of the prussian green in there and maybe a neutral tint together just to because i really want to create a darker shade and a bit of um, and that brown so now the shade is going to be getting just a little bit more greeny in a way I can almost vaguely see the silhouettes of some trees some really blurry ones there there a little bit of ochre to lighten it up and same here so you see when you hold your paper a little bit more vertical you get a different result because the paint starts to run down a bit all right so just darken a little bit at the front and i'll use a small brush for it yeah so you see how when you're painting something you don't really need to um, do the exact copy you can just create the feel of that place or that photograph and a lot of the time it actually works better than trying to copy everything because if you're just copying a photograph then you might as well just do a photocopy really I mean, there's nothing wrong if this is the goal that you set because you want to improve your skill. But if you're thinking of it as a little artwork, for example, so I'm enhancing a bit of that blue in there. It's not as strong in the photographs. But I quite like the way it sort of pushes things back a bit and makes it look even fresher. Okay, so this one is also done.
So this is again a little bit different from the previous ones. So for this one, um, my patron did not send me a photograph but said you can choose something to do. So what I um, am going to do is I'm going to do something different. So first of all I chose a composition where you can use paper vertically and also have chosen something that is part of the landscape but more like an outside of the building and it's going to be a door I'm not going to use um, tape to straighten the edges for this one this one is going to be a little bit different and I'm going to also use a pen with it so it's going to be a little bit different altogether so I'm going to sketch the door One more thing to keep in mind when you are um, creating a painting is that when you see something um, it might not necessarily give any meaning but as soon as you paint it there are other attributes that and connotations that people will be you know tying it in so for example you might see I don't know say a cigarette bud on the street you're not gonna think much of it right you're just gonna think it's rubbish but if for example someone paints a cigarette bud you start to okay so mm, what are they trying to say here oh it must be this and this or that and that so it's one of those things so whenever you're painting something you have to understand that there would be some kind of a connection that people would be making and uh, a lot of the times i find that when people try and figure out the work or think about it it's kind of like they um, sort of think of it as almost as dreams you know like in the dream you see something and it doesn't necessarily mean what it means you know it's like an, a symbol of something it's the same thing the way people see art as well a lot of the times okay so the sketch is done and now I am going to um, create my washes then let it dry and then I will use a black pen to um, really you know just finish it off so as I said before you know using different techniques and different things to um, just to show you what you can do you know with watercolor that if you if you're using something it doesn't mean that this is the only thing you can use and so on okay so First, I'm going to do a little wash on the, on the rock. A little bit of color here and a little bit of it there. You know, it's got that beautiful sort of yellow stains on it. One more here. So this is, I'm just using Quinacridone gold. There's also a little bit of the bright blue. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe it's moss or something that's growing on it, but it's definitely giving, you know, there's a bit of that color coming through, which is quite beautiful, I think, on the rocks. And I'm also going to apply some greenery as well. A little bush here as well, plant of some sort. Still a little bit wet, but I'm going to um, go for the door anyways. It's sort a of turquoise teal. Oh, I went over the cat. I have to make a cat a different color now. Not white. I forgot about a cat, sorry. Sorry, little pussy cat. It's okay, we'll dye you some other shade. Or something else. <laughs> that's what I mean, that's the creative license. Now I'm going to add a little bit of burnt orange because there's a bit of that sort of a almost like a rusty color that's popping through as well. A 
it's probably the last from those metal things. And I can lift it up just to, to lower it around a little bit down. So my camera um, turned off a little bit, so there's a little bit that I've missed, but um, I'll just explain what I did. I just added some extra shadows and things like that, just a little bit, just like this. I'll show you quickly what I did. So just adding some paint and just like that, you know, to show things a bit stronger. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab a pen This is just a fine line, um, something ticky graphic, permanent ink. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm just, you know, especially in the areas where the paper is quite dry, I'm going to go over and add lots of details. So things like leaves and things like that. So it's like a, it's still watercolor, but this is much more illustration-like and can be quite quite a bit of fun to work. But you don't need to do every single leaf, but you can do like a suggestion. Works like this can be very relaxing and very therapeutic. suggestion of the grass okay. now I'm just looking at these different parts as well Let's have a look at these ones here. Okay, so now let's have a look at the door itself. So the door is made out of these boards. Some of them are quite prominent and others are not so prominent. Because it's such an old door, you don't need to do things very straight, you know, everything is quite wonky, so you can just freehand it like that. So see a very different um, way of working with watercolor and that's what I want to show you. That's why sometimes it's quite good to do lots of little sketches because it really frees you up, you know, like you don't feel so committed um, because it's a little painting so you can, 
you know just just try all things out and then think oh i don't like this style so like i don't like this style so then you keep, don't have to get back to it oh you might absolutely love it okay so now i think i'm done and um yeah so it's quite good to see all the different sketches let me know guys which one is your favorite and um, in the comments i'd really like to hear and maybe not just which one but why what is it about that one that you know really stands out to you or you know that i'll be very curious to hear about that i hope you've enjoyed this video please remember to subscribe press notification bell give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and as always i want to say big huge thank you to all of my patrons who have been supporting me so far and you guys without your help it wouldn't be possible to make all of the videos that i have done up until this day so thank you so much for your help and i think everyone on youtube probably should also say thank you to you because as i said a lot of these videos are only available because of your continuous support if you would like to become a patron please find a patreon link under this video go over there check it out because you might actually be able to find something really useful for yourself there starting from um, extra videos uh, really in-depth demonstrations um, artist tips and one-to-one -one consultations as well as um, going into the drawer to win the works there are so many different options that are there that you might like to choose for yourself so please go over there and check it out and as always thank you so much to all of my patrons who are already supporting me i hope you guys have a lovely lovely day and as always thank you so much for painting with me